dear uh, chairpersons and my esteemed audience you know what i'm going to present next 19 minutes is something new and something more which i picked up in discussions and my and and, and my my fellow colleagues and you know it's a topic of great public health importance and and we must be a lot to this topic because it's going to embrace all of us too soon if we do not embrace it it will embrace in a difficult way all of us this particular presentation comes out of a group that we are going to form and with the blessings of the government of india because it's a great public health importance to recognize that diabetes today is a disease of multi morbidity my esteem chair person alluded to comorbidities which can be either concordant or discordant and this comorbidities are are, are galore in diabetes mellitus what i'm going to speak today are a step beyond the comorbidities which is going to uh, definitely come to all of us we must prepare for that dear friends i must tell you that why this talk it's about a emerging concept which came in the in the uh, annals of medicine and also the on the endocrine clinics of north america in 2021 and 22 but was also described earlier by barnes and others from the uk and kamles kunti was one of the pioneer in that also now diabetes mellitus today is evolving as a multi morbid disease and uh, we discuss about the clusters sasang used the word cluster in a different way but i must be also using clustering of the diabetic multi morbidity you will see how the clustering is true number 3 that uh, there are emerging evidence which was alluded to in this meeting again and again and again that simple practices has great impact on this multi morbidity that's my take home message and this can change the destiny of the persons with diabetes i have a very brief uh, schedule to 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 make my points we'll discuss the epidemiology multi morbidity as a whole not not only for diabetes we'll discuss the the multi morbidity in type 2 diabetes taking pages from the epidemiology association of diabetes and multi morbidity on the outcome of the disease how this multi morbidity influences the outcome of diabetes mellitus how do we manage it and then the summary and carry on message now coming to the epidemiology of the multi morbidity as a whole what is multi morbidity i like the simple things the simplest things are the greatest multi morbidity the presence of two or more long term conditions if it is single we call it comorbidity if the comorbidity a chair person <clears throat> explain is related to diabetes directly we call it concordant if it is different i'll give an example the 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 neuropathy retinopathy nephropathy are the concordant comorbidity but epilepsy and mental conditions that can occur in diabetics is a discordant comorbidity <clears throat> multi morbidity when this association is with more than two other diseases we call it multi morbidity <clears throat> it matters why this multi morbidity matters because living with multiple conditions is now becoming a norm rather than exception in many people with type 2 diabetes mellitus it is associated with three things poor quality of life number two more hospital admissions and higher mortality and our health services are largely organized to look after the single disease so it's very important for us to know that we must take care of the multi morbidity <clears throat> this cartoon is very important as you will see here in this cartoon that you know as the as the duration of the disease advances and we are having diabetics living for longer period you find the comorbidity number starting from 0 gets up to 8 dear friends there are so many comorbidities that i have listed here and you will find it includes hypertension asthma cancer depression angina is a part of the relevant comorbidity which is related to diabetes we have migraine eczema dermatitis the list is non ending but i wanted to tell you that these all comorbidities do occur in diabetic and we must take cognizance of it i'll come to a minute <clears throat> now 
the patterns of multimorbidity in the middle aged adults was, was encountered in the UK biobank analysis. Now it was found that 19% had more than two chronic conditions in general, not diabetic population. First cluster included only MI and angina. But the second cluster, which had 26 conditions, had diabetes as the center of this cluster. I, I want a cartoon to show you that this cluster included people who had diabetes and because of diabetes had accelerated aging. I've given the, uh, given the ways that diabetes produces accelerated aging, whether it is, uh, and, and actually aging is mediated through, as you know, to uh, telomere shortening, oxidative stress, cellular senescence, and many other things, which I will not describe because of lack of time. But suffice it to mention that this accelerated aging can give rise to stiffness of the cell, giving rise to cell damage, hypertension, atherosclerosis, can produce direct damage to arrhythmia and heart failure, and of course, through inflammation to IR, <clears throat> of course, give rise to diabetes per se, obesity, and others. Dear friends, it has been also shown that obesity has been associated with 21 non-overlapping cardiometabolic, digestive, respiratory, neurological diseases. And today, we have type 2 diabetes almost synonymous with diabetes. So that also gives the significance of multimorbidity that occur in type 2 diabetes mellitus. And if you look at the BMI and the cardiometabolic multimorbidity, you will find that as the, uh, as the uh, <coughs> BMI increases, you will find <coughs> the multimorbidity increases from 0.9 to 16, meaning thereby the higher the BMI in a diabetic, the greater is the multimorbidity. And Dr. Mishra is going to speak about the newer guidelines for India. <coughs> now, it has been also shown by various studies that people living in the more deprived areas, any part of the globe, are more developed form of multimorbidity. In 10 years, they develop more. They develop 10 years earlier than those living in the most affluent areas. And, you know, it has been shown, this is a very piece of, important piece of evidence, that uh, the mental health problems is associated with the number of physical conditions that people have. It's a great study. If you have multiple physical comorbidity, the mental comorbidities do occur. This is a very important piece of information. It has been shown that the long-term trends of multimorbidity and association with physical activity is shown here. It is an older English population. And you can see from the chart that the overall, if, if, if you find the people who do mild at least once a week physical activity compared to those who are inactive or did moderately once a week activity or vigorous at least once a week physical activity, you find the prevalence of multimorbidity comes down significantly. I leave this slide for a few seconds more to get the message that the people who are not active at all, they only walk from their house to the garage and no other activity at all. Compared to people who do a lot of physical activity, either once a week, mild, moderate, or severe, the multimorbidity quantum and the impact comes down very significantly. Therefore, today, physical activity has evolved as a very important piece of information to practice to reduce the comorbidities. Your friends, uh, uh, Sashank showed that one of the very important pillars of today's guideline is the quality of life. And I must tell you, there was one Indian who wrote to uh, ADA as early as 2015 to say when you say about comprehensive diabetes management or integral diabetes management, you cannot forget about psychosocial aspects. It was Sanjay Kalra from Karnal. And from 2015 onwards, ADA has this quality of life as a pillar. And latest 2022, uh, September and again 2023, which has been released just now in a guideline, has given this quality of life as a great significant uh, pillar for diabetes management. And it has been shown that those people who do great physical activity, I mean, you know, it is LSM part of LSM, they have a great thing to, to remember that increases their quality of life 
by leaps and bounds. Dear friends, now coming to specific, the type 2 diabetes mellitus and the, and the multimorbidity. Dear friends, a single slide which shows that if somebody has diabetes, you see the percentage who only have the all the row conditions like coronary disease, hypertension, heart attack, stroke, atrial fibrillation. They can have COPD, painful conditions, depression, dementia occurs in about 17.6-18% cases. Now, if it is below 65 years, it may be up to 9%, but above 65%, it occurs in almost 7% of the population. Dear friends, it has been said that the diabetic, when they get multimorbidity, multi can be of three types. It can be traditional that all the pathies, nephro, reno, cardio, and the and the and the and the um, uh, other other involvements. It can be non-traditional in the form of obesity, in the form of cancer, but it can be totally different. That is called emerging diabetic multimorbidity, which today includes mental conditions, depression, various forms of psychosis, psychosis, skin conditions, and asthma. So, therefore, the three varieties of morbidity can occur. One is traditional, non-traditional, and emerging. Dear friends, if you, if you take into consideration the impact of this comorbidity, it has been shown that uh, this complexity of the conditions has a bearing on the, on the longevity, and with the comorbidity, the lifespan significantly comes down. It has been also shown that the people who have multimorbidity, they have more consultations, they are more cost, they have to spend, and the type 2 diabetes cost increases. There's a small study which has been done both in the, in the United Kingdom and USA, I'm quoting it, it was shown that without comorbidities, the number of consultations per year was about 10. With more than five comorbidities, the consultations was about 19. These are simple studies, public health studies, but which, which signifies that with comorbidities, the number of consultation, the drugs, and the cost increases <coughs> very high. Your friends, if you look at the cardiovascular, cardiometabolic comorbidity, and, and, and look at the uh, emerging risk factors in the collaboration study, uh, as the all-cause mortality, you will find that the disease starters at the baseline, if you take, you know, these, these complications, the comorbidities have been made into clusters. The diabetes can occur with MI and stroke. Usually the MI and stroke go together. If you, if you, if, if you have about uh, uh, 541 patients in that particular participant in that particular study with diabetes, stroke and MI cluster, the number of deaths were very high, 379. These are eye-opener to know. People who had only stroke and MI, it was about, about uh, uh, the, 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 the number of deaths uh, out of 1836 was about 1174. The hazard ratio was 3.5. Those who had diabetes and stroke, it was out of about 1321 people, 778. Those who had diabetes and MI, it was out of 3283. 1794. The point that I want to bring home that if the comorbidities increase, like diabetes, MI, and stroke, the mortality is high, and 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 it goes on in that way. Now, this is a well-known slide. Undergraduate students, we teach this that if the life expectancy is 60 years, if there is no diabetes, one lives up to 60 years. One has diabetes, it is minus six years, and diabetes with TB disease minus 12 years. In that way, it has been also worked out having multi morbidity uh, significantly decreases the lifespan of a diabetic. Now, this is an important slide again to point out that the life years gained by physical activity in people with and without multimorbidity is shown here that in either group with multimorbidity, without multimorbidity, the life years gained by regular physical activity is great. However, the benefit with the multimorbidity group is very high. This might look as a very simple message, but you will realize what Sashank said some time back, <clears throat> that they ultimately, 
the the impact of the latest guideline is on the psychosocial factors and the physical activity factors so we cannot ignore this fact that physical activity provides you a lot of life years gain and also it has been shown that long term trends of multimorbidity is associated with physical activity if somebody has great physical activity the multimorbid association is much less and uh, it has been also shown that uh, after the type 2 diabetes diagnosed uh, 25% develop cardiovascular disease and 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 non cardiovascular complications with a median period of 12 to 14 years and those they received intensification 5 or 6 years later the message is loud and clear if you have diagnosed type 2 diabetes today and do not provide an integrated therapy if there is a therapeutic inertia the development of cardiovascular cardio renal complications are very much if you start the treatment after 5 to 6 years intensive treatment after 5 to 6 years it is not going to be much benefit therefore today's clarion call that the first year control matters first year control matters is the one which came from the chicago school of medicine clearly says that early aggressive control as early as first year is of paramount importance of course of course needless to mention that multimorbidity gives greater mortality and coming to management <coughs> it is embedded in what uh, shashank just now showed it says about the quality of life physical activity and 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 the guideline based therapy as the in thing for preventing the multimorbidity and also it again emphasizes the leisure time physical activity and the life expectancy being associated with increased life expectancy and the consequences of multimorbidity is the polypharmacy some people even take about more than 10 medications and you know the medication errors are more with polypharmacy one should keep in mind and also polypharmacy is associated with in risk of falls and uh, the treatment complexity and adherence if you have got pre uh, comorbidity the 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 adherence is much less two is slightly better if you have only one comorbidity the adherence is better therefore having comorbidities decreases the adherence to treatment so it is better to take off the comorbidities if possible the last part of my talk is to is is the deintensification of treatment in the older people with type 2 diabetes mellitus who have multimorbidities it has been shown in a systematic study that if you deintensify of course it has to be appropriate it has to be need based and you do not go for a very very strict control very very strict criteria and 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 social i mean rationalized management the the deintensification can give you some benefit in preventing uh, the comorbidities now it uh, it has been again shown about the uh, older english population physical activity and uh, and the four groups how the risk came down in these groups now this is the last three slides of mine which shows that the there is a integrated multidisciplinary model of care for people with uh, with with diabetes mellitus the patient is at the center and and one has to take care of it by by the multiple specialist but you know it has been said i mean no i'm not telling you because of the i mean everybody has passed through a generalist generalist training so generalist training is probably very important to diagnose and take care of the multimorbidity you know one can be dm and beyond dm but you know one has to also have a generalist attitude that's what is emphasized in this slide that is very important and more suited to take care of these complications uh, dear friends uh, integrated care means a patient engagement education of the healthcare providers new ways of working and uh, to summarize i will say that the multimorbidity is the norm for people with long term conditions multimorbidity contributes significantly to health outcomes we in india need to be aware of this and understand how to support people with multimorbidity therefore we have formed this group who will be getting later or each one of us to contribute data to the what a multimorbidity found in diabetes mellitus diabetes has to be managed holistically uh, and the type 2 diabetes is occurring at a much younger age in india and type 2 diabetes in the young is tom today in india as a malignant diabetes therefore the multimorbidity study in this population because very important 
a more integrative multidisciplinary approach is important. And last part, there is strong evidence for a temporal association of unhealthy lifestyle factors and multimorbidity. There's an inverse dose response association between level of physical activity and multimorbidity. There is a need to explore the causal association between physical activity and the multimorbidity and its impact as a primary prevention strategy. Uh, conditions such as diabetes, hypertension, and asthma are the epicenter of disease clusters of this multimorbidity. A more integrative, multidisciplinary approach is necessary. And since in India, type 2 diabetes occurring at a much younger age, we have to be more alert to this. Thank you very much for a patient hearing. Uh, 